All right, thanks for joining me. I wanna talk about <clears throat> the way entrepreneurs think because a lot of you have asked me about how you could make some more money. And my thinking on that is when I discuss it with most of you is that you wanna do it without getting a new job or starting a, a 40 hour a week venture. It's really not necessary to make money. You can provide products and services and you can provide value to people to other businesses that are high quality and you don't need to spend 60 hours a week and 40 hours a week and things like that. So I wanted to give you a couple of examples. So a couple of weeks ago, I took my family to a bed and breakfast over in Daytona, which is about an hour away, a couple hours away from where I live. And we stayed there for a couple of days, two and a half days, basically. And while I was there, it just turned out to, that um, the, 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 it was this huge, incredible uh, house. It was an old house built in 1888. It was really nice. And it's right there by the beach. And uh, it's a place where people um, ha stage weddings and other social events. And so the owner who had just bought the house in January, which is only what, 10 months ago, he was nice enough to let uh, a local church use it at, for a charitable event where they were, they were trying to... Um, raise money to pay for the removal of an organ in their church. And what was interesting about that is that um, the church had raised the money to buy a new organ. And when they raised the money to buy a new organ, they bought the new organ. And then they got a, they realized that there was a cost that they didn't consider, which was removing the organ that was already there. Because I, I guess it's integrated into the building. And the cost of that was $30,000. <laughs> So this woman who was in the community for, for many, many years, she was, I remember because when, so he, he, he allowed them to come to the, the house and show all the art and, and sell it in this charitable event to raise money, right? Well, the artist who was behind all this was this 98-year-old woman, okay? And um, the first day we were there, so it was, it was the day after our first night. And so when we came back there uh, at the end of the day, they had already staged everything. And so it was, the place was full of people and there was artwork everywhere. And as I walked in the door, I saw this woman sitting there and I just said, hello, you know, just she kind of looked at me and smiled and I, I didn't know her, but she was, you know, being cordial. So I said, hi, and I kept walking. I didn't know that that was the woman who had, who had um, produced all this incredible artwork. Okay. And so she was literally selling the originals. So anyways, um, when I found this out, uh, I, I gave my wife a little bit of money and I said, go in, go downstairs and let's go and let's buy some art. You know, let's contribute to what they're doing and participate and go some talk to some people. So we started talking to some people and looking around and we bought some art. And my thinking is I'll just buy the art and then it'll, the money will go for the good cause. And then I'll sell the art on eBay or I'll have my wife sell it and we'll take our time selling it. And maybe we'll make some money back on it. And then we'll take that money and donate it again. Or, or whatever, we can keep the money, whatever. We can recover the money we donated, right? That, that's how I think. And uh, so then I got to thinking, I thought, well, you know, every, every time I start looking at stuff like that, I think, well, gosh, if I can do that, why couldn't I, I make more money than that? And why couldn't I just continually donate to the church? Or why can't I just set up a whole thing that I can just, maybe I can donate 90% of the revenue and keep 10% or something and make it like this little hobby or something. And um, what I discovered is that she was willing to sell her originals, which is a no-no. You really shouldn't do that if you're going to be an artist. You want to keep the originals in, in your possession or, or in your estate, okay? But she wasn't even thinking like that. And so I started a conversation with the owner of the bed and breakfast, which he knew way more about the artist than I did. And so he was kind of like my liaison by default. And he's a really nice guy. And so my thinking is, is to, I don't want to do all this work, but Really, all we need to be able to do is um, take the original and make a print out of it, which takes, it would probably take, as far as cost, maybe it would take $60 to do that. And then it would cost money to make a print of each of those prints. Or it would maybe take 30 to $60 to make a photograph that's the, the, high, the high quality that's needed to display the artwork on a website. So there's a little bit of cost for each original. And this lady had hundreds of originals. So we could just take our pick or we could take the next year and just slowly acquire all the originals. Like we could, we could get the original from her and make prints, get her permission to reproduce it and sell it in whatever term she wants, basically, and then give her back the original and go ahead and make prints and make it part of really a website or a product that we could sell on a website, Etsy, eBay, whatever. Um, with infinite inventory, because we can keep reduce, re, uh, reproducing the prints, right? 
I mean, anytime you can sell something that you have an unlimited inventory for, that, that's a great opportunity. And we don't have to make a lot of money and we can make some money because a lot of people will buy things. It doesn't have to be some brilliant work of art, like a, you know, these, you know, some famous painting. I mean, it was, it was really nice. The things she did were really incredible. Um, it could just be something that people would want to hang on their walls. And so instead of spending a thousand dollars for the original or $200 for the original, even you can get a print of the original for $29. How many of those can we sell? I mean, you could take the value of a $1,000 original and you can make hundreds of thousands of dollars from it by just selling the prints. And she already had an audience that was thousands of people. I mean, this lady for her entire lifetime did this work in Daytona Beach in that area. And she had done some other work of like um, stained glass designs, things like that all over the place. So she's really well known. And all we'd have to do is make it available to people. And they would certainly, and we could just promote it a little bit and they would certainly continually buy this artwork. So anyways, this is a work in progress. I'm not sure if we're actually going to do this. I'm not sure, you know, if I want to, you know, promote it to someone else. Maybe if you see this video and you want to do it, by all means, you're welcome to do it. Um, I haven't done anything yet on it. Uh, I think I'm going to this, maybe this month. The first thing I probably need to do or the next thing I need to do, I've already checked to see about getting prints and the cost and things like that. But the next thing I really need to do is get permission. And I don't even know what that looks like. It's just some sort of permission to reproduce her artwork. And I don't even think I need that. I think I think I can just do that once I have possession of the original. But just to be to be sure, I would rather get permission from the artist. And I'm sure she would agree. And I really truly do want to make it somewhat of a charitable function as much as I want to make a little bit of revenue off of it. It'd be kind of nice to just create perpetual revenue out of this. It would serve a lot of people. So anyways, that is how I happen to think of things, especially even when I'm on vacation and relaxing, taking a couple of days off. And it just runs in front of me. Just opportunity just comes right there, okay? And uh, I see this every day. I see these opportunities every day, and all I can do is talk about it because there's too many. I can't, I can't do them all. And I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna share an another one with you that I see all the time, and I really never gave it much thought until this Saturday, when uh, my son is in, uh, he, he uh, is, is a member of a gym, and he's in jujitsu, and so he's doing pretty good, and he goes to these tournaments. And people put these tournaments on, these big corporations, they put these tournaments on, you know, like soccer uh, tournaments or football, you know, games or whatever. But this happens to be jujitsu. And what they'll do is they'll find a venue, a place, and they'll rent the place, and then they sell tickets. Now, in this case, one of the uh, students with my son, he's an older man, he wanted to put on this event. So he went to a hotel and got a ballroom, and they they marked it off and they put the walls up and they got that their space they needed. And I don't know, they probably paid a couple of thousand dollars to reserve the room and they sold tickets. Now here's the interesting thing about this. This is an event planning scenario. So this person looks at the ability to plan an event. He understands the market. He's in it. He's one of the customers. He's a gym member and he's a participant, right? So he, he, but he's older and he has an understanding of doing things like an entrepreneur. So he goes and reserves this hotel room and goes to the, the gym owners, probably makes four or five phone calls and says, hey, I'm putting on an event in six months or three months. Would you like to go? And of course, that's great. They're gonna go. They're, they're kind of, you know, colleagues, if you will. So he's already got an audience. He doesn't have to do marketing. He doesn't have to be on TV. Or he could, he doesn't have to. And, and the way this worked is he put on this event, contacted the audience he already had as a captive audience, didn't have to pay for a lot of marketing, just a couple of phone calls using his relationship to these other gyms. And 400 people approximately appeared. These 400 people attended and they were the participants. Now, the deal was the way he set this up, it could be any way he wants. Here's how he did it. He did not charge the participants anything. If you came as a participant, you wouldn't have to pay a dime. Just show up, fight, leave, maybe you win a trophy, whatever, and you're done. But of course that doesn't happen, right? This is, people love these things. They go there, they get food, it's at a hotel, you know, they have an excuse to go out to eat. So they bring their, their child or their friend or whatever, they go with their friend and they're gonna pay as a spectator. So he charged the spectator, but not the participants. So of course the parents, my wife and I went, and so we paid $15 each to go there. So we paid $30 to, to be in this, uh, to watch this event. And of course we, we make our own videos and things like that. So, so we ran the numbers on this. My wife and I were sitting there. Of course, I brought the conversation up because she doesn't care, but I was just saying, you know, think about this. 
you know, this guy went and put this event on, this one guy put this event on with a couple of phone calls, basically. And the way he charged it was cool because no participants pay and the spectators pay. And it was 15 bucks. Kind of high, I think, but it's for a good cause. All right. So we ran the numbers on this and we're thinking, hmm, there might have been two people per participant on average. Maybe there was one or none, but maybe there was three on some or whatever. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But we're, we're estimating that he made between ten and and $12,000 for that event. Ten and $12,000 for just knowing a few things and using some relationships he has, planning something out. And yeah, he had to put some money down. He probably used his credit card. So what? Maybe he didn't put any money down. In fact, it probably cost him nothing to make $10,000 that day. That's pretty good for a Saturday, huh? That was an all-day event, probably six or eight hours. In fact, he didn't, he didn't even have to be there. I'm sure he fought in, in the match. I didn't watch his match, but I'm sure he was there. But, you know, that's what they do. Um, and so what I'm just saying is that this is an example of how to make money. And I know I give it examples of um, my, my, my traditional one is go to exchangemarketplace.com. Okay, I just picked that listing service that lists websites for sale. Okay, it lists, I think it was Etsy websites or Shopify, it was Shopify websites um, as an example. But there are hundreds of those out there. You can search on the internet for website or online business brokers. But you can also see opportunities like this. Now, let's just look at the demographic. Who his customer was? His customer is a special interest group. Okay, it's a gym where they practice jujitsu. It's a special interest group. What other special interest groups do you know in your neighborhood or you that you're connected with? What about a church? What about a football league, soccer league, baseball, all these things, okay? And I know with the fake pandemic, it's hard to get things done, but you can. You can work it out. And it doesn't have to be in your neighborhood. It could be in another state. I'm just saying, and you don't need to be an event planner. In fact, you could collaborate with an actual event planner if you want to make it quite large and take a cut of the action. And don't do all the heavy lifting. Don't reinvent the wheel. In this case, he didn't really have to reinvent the wheel. It was a couple of phone calls. It wasn't difficult to do. In fact, I could probably do one in three months. I don't want to. I'm just saying for a payoff of 10 grand, I mean, he probably netted $10,000. I mean, if you netted $8,000, that's pretty good for a Saturday. And probably overall, he may have put in with the time at the event. Let's say he was at the event the whole time and the time he put in to organize it. He should not have spent more than one solid day or 12 to 24 hours of his own time. I would guess. I'm probably overstating how much time he spent on this. So I just wanted you to share that. I want to share that with you to give you an idea of what other things you could do with opportunities that you're seeing every day that you might be participating in. You don't even realize until you start thinking like I'm just explaining here, okay? Hope that gives you some ideas. Let me know if you want to discuss anything.